Hello and welcome to Byte Side. I'm Seamus Byrne. This is a show about tech and games and digital culture. Video streaming moved from a weird niche into the mainstream quite slowly and then all of a sudden over the past decade. And it's probably right to see game streaming in a similar place to where Netflix was 10 years ago, almost literally. In 2011, Netflix was just starting to expand its availability into countries outside North America, eventually arriving in Australia in 2015. It's wild to think that it's actually only been six years since streaming arrived. But now video streaming is so fundamental to entertainment in almost every household. For games, the services are starting to appear in North America and Europe, and now they're beginning to dip their toes into the Aussie market. There's the big boys like Xbox beginning to offer xCloud gaming, and there's NVIDIA's GeForce Now, both offering the latest and greatest through a subscription. But then there's AntStream Arcade, a clever retro-focused streaming service that is available for free and has over a thousand classic titles from Space Invaders through to Mortal Kombat on its service. No downloads needed, just stream and enjoy it right away. And it's ad supported, so everything is legit. And like Netflix, it's been doing its thing for a few years already overseas before deciding it was time to come to Australia. It launched locally with a tie-in alongside the fancy new Atari VCS game system, but it's available across a range of devices and the web. Steve Cottom is the CEO of Antstream Arcade, and I got to catch up with Steve for Byteside to talk about the origins of his plan to launch an independent game streaming service and all the ways that they're actually adding features to make playing classic games through the Antstream platform Feel that little bit extra. We start off the chat by asking Steve about his own origins and love for all things retro. Yeah, so I guess I've been I've been gaming, I guess, since about 1980, um, when I was about probably eight years old. And then I, I started playing video games, and at the time they were just so magical because I couldn't really, my brain couldn't, I was just in awe at how I was holding something and controlling something on a on a digital on well CRT screen. At the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it just it just blew my mind. And then from that, I I wanted to kind of learn how games are made. So I taught myself to code. Um, and yeah, I've I've been into kind of tech coding and, and gaming ever since. And uh, yeah, I, I think you know with Antstream, I just felt that you know there wasn't really anything for gaming like spotify or netflix where you can access all the stuff you know like we're talking about now the game you grew up playing with and and how do you access it how do you play it with, without you know people can download emulators and and roms but that's a uh, yeah sometimes a little bit shady so uh, yeah, yeah. i want to make it easy yeah that's great and i mean that's it it seems like you know on one level i'm like was it just you know almost like a business decision to go hey here's a niche that isn't really being fulfilled well or whether it was that personal passion that drove it because it does in the end seem like I well I guess personal passion sometimes directly points to something that isn't being served right when you go wait a minute I want to do this thing why can't I do this thing <laughs> not exactly that and I think I mean the idea for answering kind of first came around about 10 years ago and it started off as a hobby project so I just wanted to I was doing a cloud project at before but I was doing a cloud project at the data center and we were moving windows from the desktop into the cloud and I thought well, well hang on if we could do that with the, the windows desktop surely we can do this with, with video games so we started mucking around with, with retro games and then it was really when I went to a mobile conference six years ago now I think and Game, you know, booth after booth, game after game, lots, but people just walking by and not really showing interest in all these kind of amazing new mobile games. And then I got to the end of the hall and there's just this massive queue snaking around the hall. And they were queuing up to play this old Atari cabinet that was stuck in the corner. And it, was, it wasn't just old, old guys like me, you know, it was young, younger people. I thought, well, do you know what? If people love these games so much and they can't easily access them, there's something here. And then we kind of started turning it into a business. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? It's something that I've often thought about with 
you know, the rise of Minecraft. I mean, I know my my son is literally, in, he's a teenager now and he's in the next room playing online with a bunch of friends on some server. Um, but then in that early days that it was like, oh, why are we going back to these blocky graphics? But in the end, it was like, well, it's driven by gameplay. Fundamentally, yeah. if the gameplay is great, then it, that side of it doesn't matter nearly as much as am I having fun or not? <laughs> Exactly, and do you know? I, I think the other thing. So in arcade games or, or, or uh, games from the kind of seventies, eighties, nineties, kind of the original casual games. If you think a game is today, more there's more casual gamers than than hardcore gamers. Um, so you know, you've got this incredible pool of content, which is really, really fun to play. And, and I think you know, one thing that we've tried to do is take that further and make them more relevant. So rather than just you know giving you Pac-Man and giving you Space Invaders. We we turn them into kind of these multiplayer challenges and tournaments. So thousands of people can compete with their friends or on global leaderboards and, and just make it a bit more engaging. Yeah, look, and that's a, yeah, that's a really great point too. I mean, let's take that step back then. You know, what, for someone who doesn't know yet, what is Anstream? How many games are roughly kind of in there right now? And what's kind of the, you know, the, I guess the progression from, from what, it, you know, what it, well, to what it is right now, yeah. Yeah, well, well, the easiest way to think about Anstream is it's a very, very easy way to access these amazing games you know, from the from the past few decades. Um, we we deliver the service very much like Spotify, um, so it's a, it's a free service. Um, well, obviously, with adverts, if you're playing for free, but we try and keep those to to kind of a minimum. Uh, and then obviously, you can subscribe if you if you kind of want to skip ads, etc. Um, so yeah, it's a great way to come and play and comp- as I say, compete on these games and, and think of it almost. A lot of people use a Netflix analogy as well, because obviously the, the, the kind of video side of it. But I think a bit more like YouTube. We've got 3,000 games licensed. We've got 1,200 games live on the platform. We're adding new content every week. Um, so there's always something fresh to play. But it's very snackable, because rather than you know like a AAA game where you might invest 40 or 50 hours of your life into that one game, with Anstream, you can come in and you'll, you'll get five minutes on Space Invaders, five minutes on Pac-Man, 10 minutes on Mortal Kombat challenge your friends and it's very kind of snackable experience that's it i love hearing that word used with retro games too right because back at the time it's just it's what games were <laughs> now yeah. it's like it really is part of for so many of us thinking how do i f- i love games how do i fit them into my life i'm busy i can't spend 40 hours on one game anymore oh wait <laughs> retro games are designed explicitly for that <laughs> Well, exactly, and and it's yeah, great. The thing is, actually, truthfully, when I used to play, I was a big um, Tomb Raider fan, so I play the, the the Tomb Raider franchise, and and I would always kind of play those through to the end. But um, I very very rarely have the time to commit to that type of game. So sadly, you know, I play probably one game like that a year, just because I'm so busy with everything else. Um, but you know, Anstream, I can dive in and and you know, spend fifteen twenty minutes just mucking around in Anstream, or Occasionally, I might burn two hours actually in an evening on Anstream, but I've played lots and lots of different content. Or I've gone on to Twitch and you know, I've watched some of the streamers that are playing Anstream. I've kind of gone in and competed with them and had a little chat. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, how with your kind of background there with the licensing effort, I love your perspective on that importance of maintaining access to classic games because you know, I think. There are more and more movements out there to make sure that, you know, that history of games is preserved because as console generations move, as all these kinds of things change and update, and then suddenly people find, oh, that the old hardware doesn't work anymore or they just don't make it available anymore. So it does seem like a service like this slots in nicely in trying to ensure an ongoing access. Yeah, it does. And look, I, again, I think there's incredible work done by the communities in preserving the games. And, and there's museums now, and there's there's collections, and there's, you know, yeah, there are places online that have pretty much every game uh, you can think of. The problem with those, and I, I think it's a double-edged sword because it's great that that preservation is happening, but also that's also happening sometimes at the expense of people who still own those games. Um, so it reminds me very much of, I don't know if you'll remember before Spotify, we had Napster yeah. <laughs> you know, and at the time, everybody thought it was totally fine to just download and rip off music and, and share it with your friends. And you know, I think what Spotify did is they came along and made that music really, really accessible, gave you a great service, made it free. Um, and you didn't really need Napster anymore and it didn't make sense to have Napster anymore. And that's really what we're trying to do. It's about making it accessible because even though 
I could go and find Pac-Man on an online website. The experience is normally pretty poor. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It won't work on all my different devices. Yeah. Um, if if I wanted to use an emulator, again, I've, I use five different devices every day. I've got to download the emulator onto all my different devices, try and sync it up. Um, so the experience of, of doing that really, to me, doesn't match up what users expect or games expect today. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, let's talk a bit more about those enhancements and things because I think that's a really nice idea because, you know, again, thinking back to the original days of standing around arcade cabinets in a dark, dingy room, uh, you know, everyone was over each other's shoulders. People wanted to be, you know, top the leaderboard. Um, maybe, you know, it's not quite that kind of a social format anymore, but creating that online is, seems like a really nice way to, you know, keep that, kind of original challenge mindset as part of this service. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, that was always the uh, the thing was that you go down the arcade, you wanted your name on that leaderboard. Yeah. Right? And normally it was only about 10 slots on some of the right, games. Yeah. So it, was, <laughs> it was pretty tough. And if someone um, turned the power off, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They didn't, they didn't Start have to back up some of the <laughs> early ones. So um, that was soul destroying. But um, yeah, with, with Anstream, we have leaderboards on, on all the games. Obviously, there's a global leaderboard, so you are competing with, with everybody on the platform. But you can also, if you anybody that you friend, you can compare your scores just against your friend group. So, because I think one of the challenges have, and we've, we've, there's more things we'll be doing around this, is if you go into leaderboards, some of the players get some just phenomenal scores yeah. that I'm never going to get anywhere close to. And it's a bit disheartening, actually, to kind of think, how, how am I ever going to get up there? But if you can then just have a little kind of, you know, party group of friends that you're kind of playing with and you can compete against your friends, you know, it it, it makes it much more attainable. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd love to kind of talk a little bit about the tech. So, you know, is it running in the game streaming sense where, you know, the games are running on a server and we're kind of get, getting sent the video or is there, you know, like a little payload of the game being sent locally? Because, again, some old games, it's a few K and that's it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how is kind of the, the tech side of it actually being managed? Uh, it's it's the former, so it is streaming video. Yep. Um, and uh, a lot of people have gone like, "Why are you streaming video for a for a game that's sixty four k and I can <laughs> download in a nanosecond? Right? It doesn't make any sense." Um, but actually, the reason is because you know, Anstream has a bigger vision, and and we're starting off with these early games, and we're rolling forward into newer and newer content. And certainly, when you get to the PlayStation area era, yeah, some of those game ROMs are like a gigabyte in size, and we wanted something that's consistent. So it doesn't matter if I'm playing a Commodore 64 game, an arcade game, or a DOS game from the PlayStation era. It's the same experience yeah. wherever you are. And you can access it on all your devices, and you haven't got to copy stuff around between them. So, uh, yeah, we, we're streaming, and we worked incredibly hard to make sure that that latency, the dreaded latency, is is imperceivable. Um, so it'd be interesting. I'm really excited, actually, to find out how it does in Australia because it's one of the challenges in Australia is there aren't as many data centers as there are here in Europe. Yeah. And you've got a much bigger land mass, so you've got that kind of speed of light issue. But, um, you yeah, know, we're, we're keeping an eye on it. And so far, the feedback's been, been phenomenal. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's launching in Australia alongside kind of the, you know, the launch of the Atari VCS, which has just come out. But, you know, I mean, broadly, is it pretty much a, if you can, you know, if you have access to a browser, then you can play and stream right now or, or are there apps and things available on different platforms uh so there's apps at the moment we are doing a browser version so i would say within the next three months there'll be a browser version cool. and that'd be great because you can see a game in the facebook link that your friends posted click it and go in and play instantly yeah um so really looking forward to that uh, but for now it's an app so you can download it on windows on mac on android on obviously the atari vcs on linux uh, and there's lots of obviously set top boxes that are Android based that, that will play it perfectly well as well. Um, and then once we've got that browser version, you'll be able to play it on all your iOS devices. And one of the unfortunate things for us, you know, I love Apple, great company, great products, but they do lock down their store and, and they, they don't seem to want apps like Anstream with catalogs of games in their store. So I think that will change. There's a few legal battles going on with Apple from, from bigger companies than us at the moment that might change that. But for now, It'll be a browser, but you won't know the difference. It feels exactly the same uh, in a browser on Apple. Yeah, and it, they're a weird one with the exceptions and things like right now, you know, Roblox doesn't count for some reason, even though it's people making games available and loading them into a 
device through an app and you're like okay yep they've got their little yeah, things I, I think apple's argument is is that they, they they try and and protect the quality of everything in their ecosystem which yeah. which i understand and respect and i guess with roblox you know what it is they can't really gauge the quality of obviously all the user generated content but i guess they look at it as a whole um you know with us they they need to trust that you know we we check the quality and we do and actually one of the things that we say internally as a company is we try and think of building Apple quality, um, we, you know, it, we're a much smaller team. You know, yeah. sometimes there's a few, few things frayed around the edges that we've still got to fix. But you know, that that's where we're working towards having that really kind of high quality premium experience. Yeah, look, when I've seen um, people trying to build like yeah, you know, Pi emulator setups and things, yeah, you know, when you start realizing that there's so many intricacies of old, you know, ROMs and cabinets and and you know, even like the difference between running a you know a Commodore this or a you know like all the different platforms things. What have you found have been the you know the the tricky parts of getting things running smoothly? Uh, so I the the stream broke for a few seconds there. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So you know, what do you feel like is the trickiest part of getting getting the you know the back end of this running smoothly? Because you know, there's so many different. Yeah, you know, old systems, or even if it is just like, oh, well, this was the, you know, we're emulating the board out of an arcade machine versus, you know, a Commodore game versus, you know, uh, you know, whatever kind of different, you know, like whatever platform it might be. So where are the tricky parts of getting it running smoothly? It's just a lot of time and effort. Um, I think, you know, there are, you know, there's a lot of open source um, work that's been done, which, which obviously helps us considerably. Um, but we're very um, we're very respectful of that as well. So we always make sure that we only use open source software that that, um, that we're able to use. Um, but yeah, it, it's just hard work, and, and we you know we have a game ingestion process which takes time, and then we have to test the games and, and, and measure them, and you know we let get the community kind of test them and, and uh, give us feedback. Um, but it is just just time and effort. Uh, do you have like? Again, not that I've ever gotten there, but in the classic games that have kill screens, uh, is that a thing you can actually manage to, you know, to get to through a stream? Uh, do you know what? Now I'm going to uh, embarrass you. Kill screen. So yeah, the old like when if you got to the 256th level of Pac-Man, you know, then, oh, right. then the it... game would actually kind of crash on you. Yes, you know, so, and I think Donkey Kong had a similar kill screen kind of moment. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, we're um, so, so we run the games authentically. So yeah, you're still. And I, I think that's a good thing because I think people that's a bit of a, an achievement. If I could get to the Pac-Man kill screen, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I'm about 255 levels away from that at the moment. But um, but yeah, no. So you get the same experience. It, it is it is you know emulating the games as they as they originally were. Now you mentioned as well there that. You know, Anstream is, you know, designed to keep evolving as a service, potentially adding kind of, you know, more, uh, you know, forward looking as a kind of, I guess, well, you know, retro keeps moving forward because we're we're all getting older. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, so what is, you know, the theory on how it's going to look over the coming years? Joe, it's interesting. So we set out with the, the original vision was for Anstream to play every game ever created. There's caveats to that. Um, but... It was ultimately, you know, the first game, you know, Pong, up until, you know, the Call of Duty 2025 or wherever we are at the time when it comes out. Um, we see it now more as a casual platform. So we're more focused on that casual content. And it's 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 games that fit that mold. So it's that kind of pick up and play experience. Somewhere where you can go, like when you used to go to the arcade and you could just walk around, find a game, play it, compete with your friends. Um, that's really what we're all about. So it doesn't matter so much when the game is from, as long as it, you know, fits that kind of mode of play. Yeah. So that's how we think about it. That's what I think you'll see in terms of the tech behind it. Obviously, we've got this these amazing original games. For now, you will see some more newer content coming in, uh, and, and and you know some of the gamers are asking us for that. Um, but yeah, ultimately, just a, a fun place to go and, and find games to pick up and play. Brilliant. Uh, look, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No, no, I really enjoyed it, actually. I hope, hope it's interesting. Um, look, yeah, throw in a, a final little uh, plug there. Where can, where should people go to to get their Antstream experience? So the simplest thing to do is, is go to antstream.com. Uh, and from there, you can, you can sign up very quickly and, and download the app for your platform, whether it's Android, Windows, Mac, or Linux. 
Awesome. And so what is your favorite game of all time? Or, or top three, if if it's too hard to pick one. <laughs> really, really tough one. So the, um, the guy, I don't know if you had it in Australia. So the game that inspired me and got me into all this was a game called Manic Miner, which was a game on a, an old ZX Spectrum, which may oh, have right. So yeah, we, it, was a, it was a much more limited platform here, but there are people who, yeah, with that British background, they, do, they did have a ZX Spectrum. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, around that, obviously, um, God, there are so many games. I love Robotron. I, I like the simpler games, uh, Robotron. And Smash TV, which we've added recently as well, is, awesome. is, is one of my favorites. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Been a pleasure. Great. Cheers. Thanks again to Steve Cottom, the CEO of Antstream Arcade. You can go and play this stuff directly on the web, antstream.com. It's free. They run ads. You heard the story. Go and check it out. And of course, we'll be back with lots more ByteSide real soon. And you can get more stories at ByteSide.com.